So welcome back for our third discussion together on the reason for God. We're talking about issues that make Christianity uh, untenable for many, many people. And our topic for tonight, let me read it, sounds like this. What gives you the right to tell me how to live my life? Why are there so many rules? Let me flesh that out. Uh, Christianity is often seen as an enemy of freedom, of authentic personhood, social cohesion, because it appears that Christians are telling everybody else how they ought to live their lives instead of uh, letting them, giving them the right to decide what is right or wrong for them. Uh, there was a philosopher, Diderot, who had a very quaint little saying. He said, there will be no freedom until the last king is strangled on the entrails of the last priest. And I'm hoping nobody here takes that literally for my own sake, but it's, he's saying it in a very startling way, but his main point is that religion is as much an enemy uh, of freedom as totalitarianism. See, in other words, a king is as bad as a priest. What do you think? I mean, I know that's an overstatement, but do you believe, do you think that uh, Christian moral claims are an impediment to freedom? What do you think? No, because a, a king has absolute power when a priest has has barriers to power. I think my, my problem is, like, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what freedom means. This sounds like an Eddie question, but um, <laughs> I think it's difficult for me to understand what the rules actually are. Isn't that what psychotherapy is about, though? Breaking rules that we've made for ourselves that are unsuccessful. We yes. ask ourselves why our life isn't working out. And, and just, just to add on that, it seems like a lot of it is actually just human interpretation. Like what is actually solid foundation, what uh, the actual beliefs are, and what is interpretation by, uh, I guess, humans as to what, what they actually think it is. So it comes down to that, I think. Yeah, but I think his original question is like, who tells you how to live your life? And with a constitution as like a government, whether it's a king or a president, it's something that can be changed, something that people can express their need to be amended. And with the Bible, there's really not that option. I feel like everybody has rules, and I believe that whether your parents give them to you, or a pastor, or a priest, or a teacher, or a babysitter, or a brother, or a sister, or a, an employer, everybody will give you rules. But it doesn't matter. if The only way that you will follow those rules is if you respect the person that's giving them to you. This question is very interesting. The question is, who gives you the right to tell me how to live my life, and why are there so many rules? Um, I think we're we're talking about within a Christian framework, and I think I'd like to sort of go up in altitude a little bit because I think that's a good sort of question that you know someone who's not of the faith can talk about. Mm -hmm. I I believe there are every moment in our life we're following someone's rules. Period. It's not sort of biblical. We follow parent rules. We follow economic policy. Those are ways that rules are enforced. So we can't really escape it. It's just a matter of no, being conscious of knowing whose rules we're following. And then that said, I think structure or rules. I, I sort of equate the two, are necessary for freedom. I think there's actually, we can have, it's called an abyss of liberty where there's too much freedom and then you, you become paralyzed because there's too many options. So I think, I think freedom and rules actually are, are, are one and the same. I think you need both. You can't have one without the other. Actually, I think there's, you, Eddie's done two, made two statements. I'd love to hear you out on, on with them. The first one is that everybody does have rules everybody does make uh, a, a decision about what is right and wrong, and then you feel like you ought to follow them. They are rules for you. And you feel a sense of obligation, and you, you can't just shrug them off. And so you, I think, are saying that it's not just Christians, and it's not even just religious people, but actually everybody comes up with a decision about what is right and what is wrong, feels obligated, and therefore everybody's working off rules. It, the, and I think they exist, uh, whether they're explicit or not, yes. is, is another question. You what know, are you so. of you think? All rules are self-imposed at some level. I mean, you have to take responsibility for what you were going to follow, but of all the things that Eddie was saying, even going to sleep, or, we have to follow these things that are self-generated. And not just self-generated. I mean, I've got young kids, so I'm, we're, we're busy imposing rules every day. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And, and the rules are empowering in the sense of if they, weren't, if they didn't follow the rules, for example, they wouldn't have friends. You know, if they didn't follow the rules, they wouldn't be able to go to school. If they didn't follow the rules, they wouldn't be able to go out by themselves, basically. So we're teaching them rules that help them. So 
Uh, now, a lot of what we're teaching them is borrowed from the Bible. Even if we're not, you know, Christians, it's still borrowed from the Bible. It's it's in relationship to the Constitution. It's relationship in relationship to a lot of other. Uh, unspoken rules or or socialization. One of the things is when you when you when you say talk to somebody, you look in their eye. I'm not sure it's in the Bible, but it's in sort of the the sort of cultural thing that we should you know we teach them basically. It, within your culture, though. Within that's, our culture, that's exactly. actually not in my culture. It's yeah. actually yeah, no. threatening to look in the eye a little bit. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think I resist that the idea that uh, there is some higher authority that uh, knows everything. Um, I don't necessarily resist the idea that there are rules that I can follow or should follow or would be better for me to follow. Um, I have a lot of trouble, however, with the idea that they are written down somewhere, that, um, that they are you know, in a book that's 2,000 years old or however many thousand years old it is, um, and that uh, you know, it's sort of doing that or damnation, you know, that kind of thing. I think life at every moment presents us with these moments uh, that we sort of start creating rules or we, we articulate rules around so like thou shalt not kill thy neighbor or covet thy neighbor's wife or a lot of neighbor stuff. Uh, and then and then what, what happens is they become sort of you know, we have to transfer these best learning practices, best life practices uh, to our children and then they become you know rules. They become very short simple rules. And I think that's, a, that, that's what happens. And in the Bible, I think, was uh, a moment in time where instead of just sort of passing it down to your children, we decided to make an attempt to codify it uh, in stories and such. And there are a lot of other religions that have done the same. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think this, this the meeting point is about rules and structure mm -hmm. and, and religion come the, together. An example I often like to use is if I eat whatever I want to eat, yeah. then I will have terrible health and maybe die in my 40s from a heart attack. If I restrict myself because my body needs certain kinds of food, that is, I'm limiting myself, uh, and I, even though it's hard in the short run, in the long run, I thrive, and I live a longer time, and I can do more things. Or exercise. Um, there's a, in exercise, I, I don't like to do exercise because it's very hard work, but in the long run, if I do it, I feel better. And so would it not be, therefore, the case that morally, it's hard to forgive. It's hard to sometimes show respect when you don't want to. It's hard to refrain from certain things. But in the long run, there's more freedom if we refrain. And therefore, by uh, limiting yourself and uh, submitting to some rules, it actually creates freedom instead of uh, diminishing it. You know, there's certain rules associated with Christianity that I don't object to. I think they're beneficial. Most of the Ten Commandments, I think, fall into that category. I think what I'm primarily concerned with and really curious about are the rules that are served to ostracize others and to um, demonize others. I think the deepest value being honored in all of this is still the value of reciprocity. I mean, that's kind of what, where it all comes from. Like if mm -hmm. all of us have it, because if we didn't, there would be no morality or Fairness rules. If justice. you don't believe that we all should have the same similar rules apply to us, none of this works. So we all kind of come from there. And therefore, like a genocide notion won't work because, you know, we don't want it done on us, so we're not going to do it onto them. That's, that's, right. that's sort of the foundation for me. But you would say it's wrong, not just impractical. Yeah, uh, genocide. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. maybe maybe your point. Yeah, that's that's an interesting okay. thing to think about. Okay. That, that makes sense. Our, about. our passion with following that might come from some un underlying feeling of sacredness. I mean, it's just not that it is, yes. um, you know, the reciprocity. I have to experience some form of genocide to form an opinion about it. I have this overwhelmingly passionate I feeling that there that any life should be protected if I can step in. Right. And where did that come from? I don't know where that comes from. I think it's impossible to avoid not observing rules in any part of your life. Uh, Stravinsky, who is a huge influence on me, always said that he felt most free when he had rules in his own life. I think that if there are rules, at some point, no matter what anyone says, we end up adopting them as our own. So I don't really know if I believe in externally imposed rules. Um, so I had a question. Um, what is the Christian view of homosexuality? Um, there are three, there's three parts of, three things that Christians say, I think, that have to do with homosexuality. Um, first of all, the Good Samaritan parable, um, and the very model of Jesus dying for uh, people who were opposing him, means that all Christians are 
duty bound to love and serve their neighbors, regardless of their beliefs, regardless of whether they're people of other faiths, people with different uh, views of sexuality. We, we are supposed to make this city a great place for everybody to live in regardless of their beliefs. That's, the, that's important. In other words, we have to love people regardless of where they are on that you know, spectrum of belief. Secondly, uh, the gospel of, of Christianity, which is that you're saved not by good doctrine, not by your good works, but by sheer unmerited grace, it pulls out the self-righteousness and the superiority that tends to go along with religious belief, which uh, has actually made a lot of gay people suffer. A lot of gay people have suffered under that kind of attitude, and I think the gospel takes that away from us, and that is good for gay people. Thirdly, uh, when the Bible tells us something about how we should live, like sex, money, power, it always does it like this. It says, God created us, and therefore God in his word in the Bible is giving you directions for how you should live in accord with your own design. It's not busy work. It's like when the owner's manual comes to a car, it says, change the oil every so many thousand miles. It's not busy work. It's saying that's how the car was designed. You know, if you, uh, if you violate that, you're actually hurting the car. So the Bible does say uh, sex is for a man and a woman inside marriage to nurture love and commitment in a long-term permanent relationship of marriage, which means polygamy, it means sex outside marriage, and it means homosexuality are considered violations of God's will, but also uh, violations of our own design. So the Bible is actually saying you're missing out if you do those things. So the Christian view of homosexuality is you're going against your own design and you're actually missing out on God's best for you. I believe there's some rules or stories that uh, basically object or uh, think that homosexuality is a sin. I think that might be a rule in spirit was trying to be helpful, but I think played out in contemporary society can be very problematic. Uh, more problematic in the sense that because it's stated in the Bible, discussion ends about it. It's just that's what the Bible says. And I think that is the more damaging dynamic that results um, from Bible rules, I would say. Let me make a proposal. One of the problems I think that we often run into is that we, from the outside, that is if you're not a kind of an inside Christian believer, it's a little hard to understand how rules actually function inside Christian faith. They actually don't operate the same way that rules and morals operate in other philosophical systems and religious systems like this. Traditional religion says, if I obey the rules, then God accepts me. Whereas Christianity says that because I believe in Christ who has done everything for me, he's died in my place and so on, I'm accepted and therefore I obey the rules. Okay, so one approach is I obey the rules, then God accepts me. The Christian idea is, uh, even though I, you know, I'm not good enough, God has saved me, he's forgiven me through Jesus, and therefore I'm accepted, and then I obey the rules. God accepts me because of Jesus when I believe in him, and then I obey the rules. Now think about this, how different this is. Two people, a religious person in this sense, and a Christian, could be sitting there next to each other. They both could be giving their, giving their money to the poor, telling the truth, you know, raising their children, doing this, but for totally different reasons. Because the religious person is doing it largely in order to get something from God, and also, if he's doing it, he feels